All right, a little late breaking commitment news that we got to talk about after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that that corner sh <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And tonight we got to talk about a little late breaking commitment news. We have a three-star quarterback out of Choctaw, Oklahoma, Choctaw High School, in Jordan Mooks, who has decided to commit to the University of Oklahoma. Mooks, who does not care that I have to wake up and do radio in the morning, says, no, I'm going to go ahead and drop this commitment around about 9 o'clock, around about R.J. Young's bedtime. And let's let the people know that Oklahoma got its fourth commitment in the 2021 class that improved its rank from 27th to 18th ain't where you want to be but it's certainly better than the nine stop stop stops nine spots you were below that just a little bit ago I mean I can't say that I was getting worried about OU's recruiting class because after all it ain't Alabama which ain't even in the top 50 right now and has one Deontay Lawson in the boat but it also ain't North Carolina it's got 11 commitments in the boat and a top five recruiting class going into the last day of March, which feels more like March 97th, more than March 31st, because this month has been from Hades, dog. And yet, Ohio State has been recruiting right through it like nothing at all has happened. Not that we're in a dead period at all. Not like they don't have to do the whole same virtual Zoom meetings that everybody else has had to do. And this is some good news for Oklahoma at a time where it's needed some good news because since hosting Latrell McCutcheon, who announced his decommitment from Alabama and is an OU lean, according to some of us, hadn't been a whole lot of good news on the OU front. I mean, you had Kamara Wheaton come down for the one-day visit. He got to see a little bit of practice before all of that got shut down because we are in an epic state. But also... You got the extended visit from Caleb Williams, which coincidentally is his last during this extended break. The dead period is going to go through April 15th at a minimum. It might get extended, but does not prevent the coaches from recruiting. Certainly doesn't uh, prevent the kiddos from coach, uh, coaching, from recruiting. You can tell I'm getting just a little bit delirious here. But back to Mooks, six foot three, 205, exactly the kind of long rangy defensive back that Alex Grinch has craved and wanted. Kudos to him and Roy Manning and Lincoln Riley for closing the deal. And while I know to some it looks like Mooks was real quick to pull the trigger, and he was because like it's a week removed. We're talking about March 24th getting an offer and March 30th just saying, no, this is the place for me. Also, not a guy that is going to be highly regarded right now. I expect him to be highly regarded going into his senior season. Because he built from Eastern Washington to Texas Tech to Missouri to Oklahoma. And so for so on, I'm sure he's going to get more offers and others. But OU was doing the coach visit thing way back in January. All right? They got a hold of his film before it even went up on the huddles. Because the huddles had it in February. They were visiting with him in January. Showing that they were doing their homework in state. And that is the real win for me with Jordan Mooks. Is it a quality kiddo that you decided to keep in state? I, I was really going after Alex Grinch for letting Jordan Reagan get up to Oklahoma State. Six foot two, tremendous athlete, great cornerback, could be just a great athlete for you. And you end up getting a raw, really great athlete who's about an inch taller, could be pushing six four by the time he gets to Oklahoma in Jordan Mooks. Mooks is also close with 2022 top 10 athlete in the class, Gentry Williams at Booker T. He wants to have. Gentry Williams joined him at Oklahoma. He also really wants to be joined in this class by one Kendall Beggs. Or Kendall Beggs. Kendall Daniels from Beggs. Daniels has seen his recruiting tick up in a furious way. AM was early. Oklahoma State was early. Oklahoma was early. And then in the last two weeks, we've seen LSU, Clemson, Alabama, and Georgia all come through and want the four-star kiddo from Beggs. The thing about Mooks is the thing about Daniels, right? Imagine if Mooks was a more polished athlete, had better ball skills, and was a better two-way player. Then you get Daniels, okay? You get a kiddo that can play outside linebacker, strong safety, free safety, 
and corner if you want. What Grand Delpit was at LSU. What really Jamal Adams was at LSU. Tyron Matthew at LSU. An athlete in your secondary that can play different three, three different positions. Not necessarily Isaiah Simmons because he's a unicorn, but he has the frame to fill out to be able to do that and use that. And if Grinch and Manning can develop him, Daniels could be great. I think the same is true of Mooks. I think having them both in the same class has your safety pairing for the future. That's not a small thing for the University of Oklahoma. You're still building toward what is known as an elite defense. They made a tremendous leap forward last year. So much so that Riley said, look, that 2019 season for Alex Grinch's defense, not unlike the 2015 season for our offense. That same offense, Baker Mayfield passes for just over 3,700 yards, has like 36 touchdowns, like seven picks, right? Leads them to a college football playoff. Not unlike what the jump was for a defense that was horrendous in 2018, one of the worst in pass defense, didn't even get to the turnover mark, didn't even get close to the turnover mark that Alex Grinch wanted him to be, but you saw what the defense could look like with a bunch of kids that weren't recruited to play in it, with coaches that did not recruit them in one year. I think that Grinch is headed in the right direction. This 2020 season was going to tell us a lot about the defense. It's a year in which I expect the defense to make a bigger stride than the offense. Maybe the offense stands pat. Maybe the offense takes a step back. I know that Riley doesn't believe in the offense taking a step back with first-year signal caller, moving musical chairs on your offensive line, having lots of inexperienced, if talented, wide receivers, not necessarily having the bevy of backs that you expected to have in 2020. Trey Sermon going to Ohio State. Hello. You're really going to have to rely on the defense to develop. You're going to have to rely on Josh Ellison and Perrion Winfrey to fill the gaps left by Neville Gallimore Dylan Fah, Mattel, and them, especially with Ronnie Perkins being out for what we think is five games to start the season. You got to add to that that Deshaun White is going to have to be doing yeoman's work at that middle linebacker position as he's going to be joined by a new running mate. Could be Shane Witter, could be Brian Asamoah, could be Caleb Kelly. The defensive backs, going to be strong. Trey Brown, we know about him. We know about DeLaren Turner Yell. We know about Pat Fields. Maybe Jaden Davis ascends to that spot. Maybe when Justin Harrington gets in, he gets to play a little slot corner and gets to either usurp Buki or back up Buki. Woody Washington might still be playing safety. Maybe he gets moved back with guys like Jordan Parker going to the transfer portal. But you can see how all of these things moving and shaking has led us to all understand Grinch knows what he has, knows what he needs to work on. He has his safeties. He has a middle linebacker. He probably has edge guys in Jalen Redmond, and of course we know about Perkins, but he needs Stripling to step up. He needs Marcus Hicks to step up. He's going to need those Juco, Jucos that I talked about stepping up, but he also needed this class to continue to fill out. You know, he got the job just in time to get the kids that he thought he wanted in those spots, not Darren Green Warren or Jalen Huff, but Bryson Washington, but DJ Graham. But Justin Harrington, right? He got guys that he wanted to get in those spots. We'll see how that goes in 2020. I think this 21 cycle is the one for which we're really going to see what it is that he wants. We're going to see the prowess of not just Roy Manning and Lincoln Riley, but what is Jamar Kane going to be able to produce? I know that they really are going a little bit toward the Jabril Cox aspect of things because Cox didn't get to go to LSU because everything got shut down before he could get to LSU. And Jamar Kane has experience coaching in North Dakota State. Jabril Cox, obviously, coming out of North Dakota State as a grad transfer. Will he help them with their defensive back recruiting? I think so. I think there's also a place where you value the experience of a guy like Kale Gundy and a guy like Brian Odom. Both of those guys are from Oklahoma. They played at Oklahoma. Now they coach there. Kale has been basically Methuselah among OU assistant coaches. We're going to be start talking about Kale Gundy the way we talk about Merv. It's just what it's going to be. The more I look at what they're able to do defensively, the better they're going to be able to recruit. That's what it's going to be. Mooks is good. Getting Kendall Daniels would be better. Mooks is good. Getting Latrell McCutcheon in the boat would be better. There's a number of guys still out there that they can go get, especially at this time when we're seeing some of the better programs or the better programs in this period have decided they want to stretch their lead. Will Shipley is going to 
either uh, change the balance of power to Clemson, to North Carolina. I know there's some folks that think he's a Notre Dame lean, but I wouldn't be shocked if he left the South to go to South Bend. I'm also pointing that out to say if North Carolina and Mac Brown can go get a five-star all-purpose back like Will Shipley, perhaps Oklahoma can still shoot their shot with the better defensive backs in this cycle. Now, before we get out of here, I want to start doing a new bit to the end of the videos. I do not get paid for these. I've reached out to restaurants locally in the Tulsa Metro because, as you know, it is a rough time. For the Metro, it's a rough time for us all, but for our local restaurants that are still trying to get it done with curbside and delivery service, I'm riding for them, all right? Because I live here. They're my people. They're my neighbors. I can offer a bullhorn. If you know of a local restaurant that you love, put them into the comments. I'm going to reach out to them. I reached out to several. I've got several back. Let's talk about a few of them. The first one I want to mention is Kilkenny's Irish Pub. Here in Tulsa. Open 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Seven days a week. During this wild time, they're offering up what I believe is an awesome deal for the folks enjoying curbside and delivery service. Okay? You get a free kid's meal with each entree purchased. I love that. Half off beer and wine. You know how we love our alcohol. And an additional 20% off for any person who works at a hospital or in the medical field. Very cool. And with all of these other offers, the folks at Kill Kenny's Irish Pub understand they're not turning a profit. That's not why they're doing this. That's not why they're doing this. They're not doing this to make money. They are doing their part to aid Tolsons by providing a safe, responsible curbside and delivery service to keep Kill Kenny's Irish Pub staff employed, all while continuing to fill the mission of public houses. You want consistency? You want community? You want corned beef? You want cabbage? You want community. And all of those things help us get back to what we think of as a little bit of normalcy, right? So please patronize Kilkenny's Irish Pub in Tulsa if you're in the metro area. You can give them a call at 918-582-8282 or visit them for curbside service at 1413 East 15th Street in Tulsa. A number of other restaurants that I'm going to mention Throughout these entire lockdown period. That's the length of this. We're going to do this. We're going to remind you that these places are out there. Especially locally. And if you don't live here locally. Feel free to call the place up. And buy a gift certificate. Maybe you'll send it to somebody in the Tulsa area. If you want to send it to the P.O. box in the description. I will distribute them. Okay. I'll just do a, a, a giveaway. Won't even like have a sign up or anything. I'll just find people to give them away to. Please help us support our local businesses. If you like the channel, like and subscribe. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.